Hello, everyone. I'm Lana Zak. Thank you so much for joining me. Bill Cosby is out of prison after Pennsylvania's highest court overturned his 2018 sexual assault conviction. The 83-year-old emerged from his home in suburban Philadelphia Wednesday afternoon shortly after his release. The state Supreme Court ruled a prior non-prosecution agreement with a former district attorney prevented the comedian from facing charges. CBS News national correspondent Rika Duncan begins our coverage from Elkins Park, Pennsylvania. A triumphant Bill Cosby, flanked by his attorneys, flashed the victory sign as a free man, upending the first high-profile sexual assault case of the Me Too era. In a strongly worded 79-page opinion, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court ruled that Cosby, now 83, had been denied a fair trial in 2018, a huge blow to his many accusers. Cosby was nearly three years into a three to ten year sentence for aggravated and decent assault against former Temple University employee Andrea Constand. He was charged with drugging and sexually assaulting Constand in his Philadelphia area home in 2004. Explaining their decision, the justices wrote that prosecutors engaged in a bait and switch because of a non prosecutorial agreement that had been struck with a previous prosecutor. The agreement gave Cosby the assurance that he would not be criminally prosecuted if he testified in a civil case brought by Constand. But that's what happened. Cosby testified in a civil lawsuit that he gave quaaludes to women he was pursuing for sex, evidence that was later used against him. We can't have a criminal justice system where prosecutors pull out the rug from underneath you because of politics. CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman said today's court decision was based on the law though it will be unpopular. People will feel abandoned, particularly victims of sexual assault. They will feel that the court, quote unquote, let him out on a technicality. This is not a technicality. It's a violation of constitutional magnitude. That's all right. The beloved comedian and actor was best known for his role as the lovable husband and father in The Cosby Show. But his family-friendly reputation was left in tatters as more than 60 accusers came forward. For Victoria Valentino, who says Cosby raped her in 1969, the news was gut-wrenching. It's just astounding. It sends the message that the law is not on our side. Once again, women have been just thrown under the bus. And Jerika Duncan joins me now. Jerika, has there been any reaction from Bill Cosby's principal accuser, Andrea Constant? Yes, Lana. In fact, uh, Andrea Constant released a statement uh, a few hours ago, and she basically called this decision disappointing. She said that she was concerned about if this would prevent other alleged sexual assault victims from coming forward because of what uh, the decision from the Pennsylvania State Supreme Court was today. And what about any reaction, Jerika, from the prosecutor who made the decision to arrest Cosby in 2015? Well, the prosecutor uh, did reach out. They sent a statement, actually, and they said that they are proud of Andrea Constant for coming forward. Uh, they still call her a victim of Bill Cosby's and said that they will continue to pursue this where the evidence takes them. So does that mean they will try and retry this case with other charges? Uh, we don't know, but we know that there were two trials here in Montgomery mm -hmm. County, and this recent news of the decision being uh, vacated or overturned means that Bill Cosby, as we stand here on his property, is a free man. And, you know, we got a chance to actually talk to him uh, for about five minutes after interviewing his publicist here. I said, is there any opportunity for us to go in and speak to Bill Cosby? And he said, well, we'll see. So we went up this driveway here inside the home. I waited in the kitchen. Uh, about a minute or two later, I was called upstairs uh, to where Mr. Cosby's bedroom was. He was on the phone, uh, seeming in a good mood, good spirits, very comfortable and relaxed, wrapping up a phone conversation with uh, what I believe to be a family friend. Um, and I simply asked him, you know, what does this message send? What do you want people to know? We know that he wasn't interested in going into detail about the accusers. He's addressed that and so as his publicist, but he said, I want the world to know that this is a win for anyone uh, who's been uh, experienced something basically that was unjust and said that justice was served today. But we know, Lana, this is a very divisive case uh, and you have a number of people, as you heard in the piece, that feel as though this is not justice served 
uh, but it just depends. Obviously, Bill Cosby says it is. Uh, his accusers say that the justice system failed them. Well, Jerika, we know how extensively you have covered this case. Thank you so much for joining and bringing us the very latest. For more on the legal analysis of this decision, I want to bring in Kim Whaley. She's a professor of law at the University of Baltimore School of Law. She's also the author of How to Read the Constitution and Why. Kim, tell us more about this non-prosecution agreement made between Cosby and the former DA. Why did the previous prosecutor choose to strike this deal in the first place? Well, you know, there's a lot of ambiguity, frankly, around what is being called a non-prosecution agreement. Normally, something like that, like that is put in writing, and under Pennsylvania law, it's actually required, they're called immunity agreements, required to be authorized by a judge. So this district attorney, Bruce Castor, who incidentally ended up defending former President Trump in the second impeachment trial, he decided instead of putting anything in writing and going through those legal requirements to just issue a press statement. And so the lower judge in this case said, listen, a press statement is not the same as immunity, so I'm not going to uh, basically hold the government to this because Bruce Castor was replaced by a later district attorney who decided to go ahead and prosecute uh, Mr. Cosby. And then in the, in the interim, there was a civil lawsuit filed by the victim here and seeking money damages and Mr. Cosby testified in that lawsuit, did not invoke his Fifth Amendment right to self-incrimination. His lawyers didn't tell him to do that. They could have. So he chose not to do that. But now, now on appeal, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court is saying, listen, that, that statement, that public statement was, was ambiguous enough to give Mr. Cosby a comfort level that he could testify in the civil uh, deposition without having that testimony used against him. And it was used against him in this trial and would lead to his conviction. So the court is saying, listen, this taints the whole thing. It violates his due process rights. And honestly, this is a problem with lawyers. The district attorney, Mr. Castor, made some errors. His lawyers arguably made some errors errors. And the second round, the trial didn't have to use his testimony in the civil deposition. They, they, those prosecutors did that with taking the risk that it could be overturned on appeal. So, Kim, uh, you heard Jerika's reporting and, and the indication that prosecutors may be looking to pursue other charges. Are they also able to appeal the state Supreme Court decision or seek a retrial? In what ways are they still able to pursue charges versus being completely hamstrung? Well, I, when it comes to Ms. Constant, this particular claimant, the double jeopardy clause of the Fifth Amendment would probably preclude s additional criminal charges relating to the conduct um, that Mr. Mr. Cosby engaged in. Just to be to be clear, this reversal has nothing to do with the facts. Uh, the facts ha and the evidence haven't been shown to be problematic. It was really procedural, but I agree with Ricky, your, uh, your legal analyst, prior legal analyst, that this is really about protecting uh, constitutional rights for all defendants and requiring that government dot its uh, I's and cross its T's. So so they could bring other charges. I mean, as you mentioned, there were there are dozens of other women. Um, and Ms. Constant, the, 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 the victim in this case, did get a $4.3 million settlement in the civil case from Mr. Cosby. So I don't think this is necessarily a, a disaster for women's rights. Uh, you know, I think it is problematic procedurally. The court could have gone two ways. There's a dissenting judge who disagreed with the majority, this six-person majority and a seven-person Supreme Court panel, but there aren't any more appeals left for this particular case. And, you know, in America, um, lots of cases are, uh, are, lots of people are prosecuted based on prosecutorial and police misconduct. So there are two narratives here, and one could argue that there, this is a win for the Constitution and for defendants in the criminal justice system, many of whom, unfortunately, don't have the, the money Mr. Cosby does to afford the kind of counsel he had here. Kim, I'm, I'm imagining that there are people who are, who are just wondering 
why why this deal was struck in the first place because as you heard the state the, in the decision from the state supreme court they called it uh, a bait and switch that they said go ahead and testify and then turned around and and prosecuted him based off of, of that off of an assurance that they weren't why, given given how pro, high profile the case was, the number of of other accusers that were out there, why would that? Why could this have this case have actually transpired in the way that it transpired? I don't know. It's really bizarre because I said it, there wasn't really an agreement. There wasn't a, arguably a binding agreement. Mr. Castor, the DA, did not follow the steps, the legal requirements to actually grant Mr. Cosby immunity, uh, and which is why the lower court didn't didn't honor that agreement. And and uh, there are lawyers that took over for Mr. Castor who said we had no knowledge that this, this was an agreement. So presumably, if it was binding on the state of Pennsylvania, the, the prosecutor's office would have understood that. And there was there was testimony testimony both ways. And so the lawyers, whatever this sort of behind the scenes deal was, they didn't paper it properly. Uh, the government didn't paper it properly. His lawyers, Mr. Cosby's lawyers didn't pay paper it properly. Mr. Cosby's lawyers in the civil action didn't arguably protect his uh, Fifth Amendment rights properly by, by asserting them, claiming, well, we thought we had this deal. This deal wasn't done the way immunity deals are done. And essentially, the Supreme Court is saying, you know, this is a bit of a mess. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court says, saying it's a bit of a mess. And when you've got on a, a balancing act here, we are going to balance this outcome in favor of constitutional rights, in favor of, of preserving constitutional rights and saying, you know what, Pennsylvania, you need to do better the next round because this was, frankly, a hot mess. Uh, Mr. Cosby did serve yeah. three years. Uh, he could have served up to 10, right. but I, he's home now. I want to ask you about that, Kim, because, yeah. because he did serve three years of his three to 10 year prison sentence. Is there any possibility that Cosby might seek legal action? Well, you know, in this point, in this point, the conceivable legal action legal action could be a civil case against the state of Pennsylvania, claiming that they violated his constitutional rights, and therefore he should have a monetary, some kind of monetary settlement. Uh, you know, whether that's a viable case, I don't know. I think politically, for him, you know, for he's 83 years old, um, and it would obviously cause a maelstrom of, of negative publicity. It's it's hard to imagine uh, that would be good judgment on. His part from both a personal or a legal matter, but you know it's impossible to say these days the kinds of things people decide to do when it comes to court uh, litigation. All right, Kim Whaley, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.